Let's take a look at an application of quadratic equations and the quadratic formula. So imagine the following simple thing. You have a shape, imagine this is x and this is x plus 1, and then imagine the area, which is the flat space the shape, the shape occupies, is equal to 25. So remember, this is that. Then we apply a basic concept, which is that the area of a shape is equal to the horizontal dimension multiplied by the vertical dimension. In our case, the area is 25, so for area, array 25, the h is x, and the vertical is x plus 1. This is a way of writing this equation. If you want, it makes no difference. You can write it this way, x times x plus 1 equals 25. And then you solve this. I'm going to make this a bit thinner so it fits better. Give me a second here. Okay, step 4. So distribute the x over the parentheses. So it becomes x squared plus x equals 25. Then step 5, move the 25 to the left with subtraction. So it becomes x squared plus x minus 25 equals 0. And then step 6 here. We're going to solve the step 5 equation by using the quadratic formula. So I'm going to say x equals. Go back here. I'm going to make it this step 5.5, so to speak. So it's a equals 1, b equals 1, and c equals negative 25. Those are the values. You need those for the formulas when you plug them in. So it becomes negative 1 plus or minus the square root here of 1 squared minus 4 times the value of a, which down at step 5.5 is... 1, and then the value of c, which is negative 25, just like that. And then this is all set over, for example, here, 2 times 1, which is the value of a. So I identified a, b, and c, plug into formula as usual. Step 7, therefore, is the following. You work this out, so it becomes negative 1, plus or minus. Under the root symbol, work that out. So 1 squared is 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 25 is positive 100, okay? And then you set this over 2 still. Step 8, I'm going to have negative 1 plus or minus, then it becomes here 101 over 2. And now, let's review a basic fact. If I want to find the root of 101, I can more or less say that it's equal to the root of 100. And I can do that because 101 is about the same as 100. And the root of 100 is known to be exactly 10. So for example, if I want the root of 37, these are just side examples. That's about the same as the root of 36, but the root of 36 is known to be 6 exactly, you see? So for that reason, I'm going to go into step 9, I'm going to make an approximation. I'm going to say it's negative 1 plus or minus, then you replace the root of 101 with the root of 100, because 101 and 100 are very close in value, which means the roots are also very close, and set that over 2. And then into step 10 have x equals here, negative 1 plus or minus. You take the root of 100, that's 10. Set that over to still. At step 11, now you have to be kind of careful, because remember, our x, back in the picture, our x right there, where I've just drawn the arrow, represents the horizontal side. That has to be a positive quantity. You can't have like a side that's minus 3 or minus a half. That doesn't make sense for a physical thing, like the length of a side of a shape. Therefore, at step 11 over here, I will say that I'm going to separate the answers out. I'm going to say that x equals the negative 1 plus the 10 over the 2. And I'm taking that one because negative 1 plus 10 is positive. So it ends up looking like this. x equals 9 over 2. And 9 over 2, you can more or less do in your head. It becomes pretty much like 4.5. And this, I'm just approximating here, okay? An approximation is more than good enough for our purposes. We're just approximating. Now, this is the value of x. Remember, back in the picture, upper left-hand corner, we also had x plus 1 to find. So since x equals 4.5, then it's 4.5 plus 1, which is 5.5, just like that. And here, let me highlight these. This is what I'm looking for, about 5.5. So back in the picture, this side, right there, where I've just drawn the red arrow, that's about 5.5. It also means that the following, let me grab a different color. So that side right there, the horizontal side, that's about 4.5. If you want, what you could do is you could multiply the values together. Let me just put check marks so you understand what I want, and that's it. If you wanted to, you could multiply the 5.5 by 4.5, and you would see that it would equal about 25, which is the area that we designated in the first place. But these are good enough for our purposes. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in another video.